Yeah, but maybe her point is, why do I have to pay so many, so much in taxes if I'm an up and coming artist? And again, not knowing what her current financial situation is, like why why am I paying all these taxes or my employees paying all these taxes and the rich oftentimes pay less than half of that, right? So maybe well, that but maybe it's still consistent with her message of <laughs> I'm not going to pay taxes because I don't believe it. In right, paying but taxes because the rich should pay. Right, but if you want to use that justification for her, then everyone can justify why they shouldn't pay more taxes, including the rich. All right, you're listening to the Brown Perspective, and today we're here with Ereo, who's our fashionista in charge. That's right. What is going on? Not much. I know that the Met. Gala happened um, a few few days ago, and I know you were glued to your TV watching the looks and how people showed up for this great cultural event. This is how plugged in I am to the Met Gala. I had to Google today, <laughs> what is the purpose of the Met Gala? Wow. Interesting. The Met Gala is the fashion industry's equivalent of the Oscars. Mm. Did not know that. And sees designers, models, and Hollywood stars gathered together to compete for media coverage. You know what this, what the Met Gala makes me think about? What? If there's ever an American revolution, it's going to be mm -hmm. triggered by an event like the Met Gala. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. That could be uh, the plot of a movie that any of those folks who um, who attended could do. <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about AOC and, and Tax the Rich. I know we're talking about this a few days after the fact, but I still I still think that it's an important conversation to have. I know there was a lot, a lot of chatter back and forth on Twitter. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't really associate with any of the camps, any of the groups on Twitter. I'm just like a casual observer. So I, I follow some guys that are progressive, others that are a little bit more liberal, conservatives, definitely some libertarians. I, I get their tweets. But so I, I see the whole spectrum, right? And I see the back and forth of people fighting each other. And, and I see definitely the extremes of the progressives that are like, AOC is a complete sellout, right? Like, like what is she doing? Like, here she is. Uh, uh, pretending like she cares about the people and then i and then you hear the other side of the more like moderate moderately conservative liberals that are like no 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 she has good intentions she has a, a good long-term plan she's raising awareness she's raising awareness about tax rich. so this is definitely useful it's not just performative so it's just really fascinating to to see the extremes and, and to i guess a little frustrating sometimes too to to just be able to make the observation that it's not one or the other. That's there's it's somewhere in the middle. This is a gradient. You can't just call her a sellout. You can't just say that she doesn't care. But at the same time, you can't give her a pass and say that there's not a performative aspect to this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's what uh, politics is all about too. And I think the fact that she is using this cultural event to try to raise awareness about her priorities so just kind of to be the what the provocateur in yeah. terms of putting putting not only her philosophy but I, I believe also the designers sort of own experience and beliefs into into fashion and and when you think about it because like this event is is you're right it may be the, the the next revolution does start because of, of an event like this because it kind of shows the the chasm between you know what the the folks who attend these types of events their reality and their lives and the facts that they're worried about not only who they're wearing the type of statement they do but which after party they're going to go to and then you have people who are unemployed and or stuck in the border trying to 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 get an opportunity at at a better at a better life so i think it does it does bring into the forefront like oh wow well wow. well some folks are having a good time with fancy fan, dress fancy uh here we are struggling and and nobody seems to care it's such a huge disconnect 
and you get enough people feeling that way. You get enough people homeless or struggling to pay their bills or working two to three jobs where both partners in, in the marriage or union are working, but they're barely scraping by. Yet you have these extravagant, opulent gatherings of the, of the filthy rich. And then on top of it, you have someone like AOC that's doing something that, let, you know, let's face it, there's, there's a performative aspect to this. And, and, and it's very easy to tell because is she at risk of losing anything by wearing this dress? Is she like saying tax the rich? I mean, yeah, most people want to. And but but saying it is just saying it. Is she going to vote? Is she actually going to vote and piss off people and actually start taking action and making sure that she aligns her voting record and she gets uh, other maybe other members of the House to vote this way? Like there's very little risk in doing this because she didn't really piss off anyone. So that's the performative aspect of it. Now, when it comes to raising awareness, look, I mean, there's there's two camps there, right? There's the camp that says, yeah, it's always good to raise awareness. You have to raise awareness about this. We have to raise awareness. And there's the other camp that's like, you know, how much awareness are you going to raise? Are you going? Or do you need to raise? Because we could be raising awareness for the next forty years. And I recall when I was in college and and I used to go to these events about. It was, uh, it was these these meetings. I'm not going to give out any names of the organizations because I don't want to get in trouble. But, you know, there were some meetings that were always about raising awareness and raising awareness. And I was like, well, that's great. Uh, how much awareness do we need to raise? And and uh, how do we measure the effectiveness of it? And, you know, is this like a one year, a, a one year type of deal or a five year? Because every single year that I would go back to these meetings, it was always about raising awareness. And, you know, it feels a little bit like that here. I mean, do we really need to raise most, more more awareness about the fact that we need to tax the rich? Or maybe should we start talking about the allocation of, of, of that money that is already collected from taxes, how, how, they, how they decide to spend it? That's a good point. Um, I do think that the rich were upset about it. Um, but to your point, I think that maybe it's her attempt to, to bring attention to, to the issue and 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 do it in this way. I, I do think that on the other hand, even though I know not too long ago I was talking about sort of the opulence of, of the Met Gala, it also connects to something that's very, very American and very important to who we are, which is fashion and art and artists, because it also is a type of event that brings together a lot of artists who who do use their platforms to bring awareness about issues and, and things that that they're passionate about and, and who's even whose own presence on 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 the catwalk or this whatever you call it, this entrance is is an important statement and the fact that now it's probably more diverse than it that it's ever been. But you're right, I think that is also okay, let's tax the rich but for what and and what are we doing with that money and how can we how can we make sure that we're expanding opportunity and not just relying solely on the on the middle class to to maintain our our way of life i agree i'm boom the <laughs> calle <laughs> well i don't want to sound like a total I mean, pessimist yes. here i know that there is value in raising awareness it's just it's really hard to quantify it because I, especially with this issue I don't I, like I said. I think most Americans, more work, most working class Americans, already understand that we need to have a more fair tax system. We need to make sure that 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 we close all those loopholes that prevent corporations and the wealthy from hiding their wealth. And that's really that's really the problem, right? Is it that the tax code allows for that? There's so many loopholes. But at the same time, this performative act in the long term helps her a lot more than anyone else again she she has some power i'm also i also understand that it's just her i think sometimes people make the mistake of of expecting too much from her she's only as good as the support that she has on the street and 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 the support that she has from the community and and honestly the progressives in 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 the house they do have some power but it, it's it's not it's not as much as people make it seem and the reason being is because we need a lot more elected officials that are progressive in order for them to really be able to uh to bring about significant change but you know when it comes to her though 
this event here definitely helps her future career. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. I, I don't know if the the more power she gets, I don't know if, if when she runs for the Senate, because she will. I think eventually she's going to run for the presidency. We may be looking at the first female president here. Because if you just look at AOC's actions from the last you know year or two, she's already aligning herself for that. And, and so... Mm -hmm. I don't know if by the time she gets to the Senate or by, if she does at some point run for the presidency and, and wins it, I don't know if by then she has compromised so much on her values that she just becomes another lame, stale Democrat that doesn't really believe or stand up for anything. It's hard to say. Or I don't know if this is her grand master plan of getting into like a more powerful position and then really, you know, giving it to them. I don't know. But I just know that it helps her. She has her, her long term plan. And I don't think I'm going to see a lot of actual policy being presented or being supported from her when it comes to this. Oh, man, so much to unpack. On the front, like, yes, I mean, if she's using this event and I think her career to be able to position herself to to run for higher office and and maybe eventually end up in the presidency, I mean, that would be pretty remarkable. And I think maybe she is. And and it's and, and, and to get to the presidency is, is a difficult journey. But I think that the fact that she can she has broad appeal and is able to to also go out there in a way that a Bernie Sanders perhaps cannot. It's also I think she's very, very astute. Right. She's trying to leverage her her visibility to elevate her profile to hopefully put herself in a position where she can have more influence to change things and you're right maybe in that process she won't be able to to pass or support policies that that would totally make a a complete difference because it is a political system that is based on on compromise and 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 many many interests would be fighting anything that she she would be doing. But the other point would be that, and actually I didn't get a chance to mention this before we started our conversation, but I know that yesterday she made a communication explaining her 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 vote her mm -hmm. her vote her vote against her the no, uh, not, one no billion present. supplemental military funding. Well, her not present, her changing of the vote from no to not not present, right? Yeah, that is a good point. Um, so yeah, tell me how you feel about that, about her action in that in that well, respect. Again, that that's her trying to walk a tight rope, and not offend her constituency. She comes out first and she says that we're not going to give funding to to Israel for their Iron Dome, and then she changes her vote to not present. That was completely unnecessary. Obviously, it it was gonna the funding was gonna go, but she if if she really cared about making a statement about the inhumane treatment of the Palestinians, then she would vote no, because it's a, it's a moral issue. On principle, she would vote no. But she changed it because uh, she can influence a lot of her constituency, because in her district, I'm sure there's a lot of support for Israel. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she's going to compromise whenever she needs to, and, and because she's already thinking long term, you know, she, at some point she said, I, I, I prefer to be a one one term representative that uh, but but to hold to my values uh, and, and get something done instead of compromising and trying to be a, a career politician. Well, she's made the calculation that whatever that calculation is, maybe she feels that she'll be more effective if she becomes a career politician, if she spends more time in Washington. But it's really hard to see that just because. The system that we have in place makes it so that you have to play by the rules already in place. And so because the people themselves are not voting in more progressives, more people that really believe in these things, then she's always going to be surrounded by other representatives, senators that have a lot of other uh, constituents that are very powerful, corporate interests and, and so forth, military interests. So she's just in a, in a difficult place. She could she could have easily like burned all her bridges and been a one term rep representative, but she chose not to. She chose to just play the long game, and that's what she's doing. So I'm not upset because I wasn't expecting 
too much from her to begin with. So I'm not that really, really that disappointed. I think people that thought that she was going to go in there and change the world are the ones that are upset. But I, I think they were a little bit delusional. They, they were setting the bar too high for just one member. You know, she is human and we're all human. You know, we we do good things, but we also do disappointing things at times and things that are, are inconsistent as well. So, yeah, it's interesting because um, we'll see how what the political fallout may be. Um, what did you think about the story about her designer? I don't know if you saw that. They started digging into her into her finances and into mm-hmm. her, her situation. And it turns out that she owes some taxes. So I know they started criticizing AOC by association because of that. No, I had not heard about it. I thought that she had grown up, uh, wasn't it like a single mom household or something? Yeah, but you could grow so, up with a single mom and still owe taxes. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> AOC's tax the rich dress designer Aurora James owes debt in multiple states. The 37-year-old fashionista who made waves at the Met Gala with Democratic Socialist AOC last week is a notorious is a notorious tax deadbeat with unpaid debts dogging her in multiple states records show. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting how I don't know if this came from the conservative media that they just wanted to find another way to criticize AOC or if this is just something that that is fair game, right? Because now she's in the spotlight. So especially mm-hmm. wearing a dress like that, tax the rich. And I don't know if she's herself is wealthy. She's definitely has a high profile. She's definitely going to get a lot more, more work as a result of this. So she might be jumping on to the wealthy um, club soon. And it's just ironic that, that she herself is not paying her taxes. Yeah, but maybe her point is, why do I have to pay so many so much in taxes if I'm an up and coming artist and again not knowing what her current financial situation is like why why am I paying all these taxes or my employees paying all these taxes and the rich oftentimes pay less than half of that right so maybe well, that but maybe it's still you... consistent with her message of <laughs> I'm not going to pay taxes because I don't believe in right, paying but taxes because if... the rich should pay Right, but if you want to use that justification for her, then everyone can justify why they shouldn't pay more taxes, including the rich. I mean, I can justify why I should not pay as much in taxes. So can a billionaire. A billionaire can easily say, I've created so much wealth for this country by generating jobs. I've, I've done this, this, and that. Why should I pay my taxes? I've already benefited society in so many different ways. I don't, get, I don't have to pay taxes. I'm going to use that money to help improve society even more. Therefore, I'm justified in hiding all of my money. I mean, look, we're pretty good at justifying things that that serve our purpose. So I'm just telling you that's a slippery slope if you want to give her a pass. Damn, you just flipped the tortilla on me. <laughs> uh, just Perreo, a... Are you a Republican now? No, I'm just telling you that if you give people a window for justification, if, if you want to give her a pass based on like some justification that is unique to her, that's very subjective. Other people will find justifications that apply for them because we're very good at at being like total hypocrites and 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 trying to justify things that benefit us. Have you ever heard people trying to justify things that that benefit uh, others, right? That 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 is for the benefit of other people and not the individual that's making those justifications. I mean, I'm sure it happens, but it's very rare. That's true. That's not the not the norm. Yeah, but. All that to say that this has been a beneficial conversation for me okay. from, as a Project Runway fan. <laughs> oh, you watch that? I used to. I used to watch it every once in a while. I, you... I think I, what I do appreciate about fashion is, is that, you know, it's another creative outlet when you think about the type of, of, of things that you have to do. And I think Project Runway, and, and I believe, you know, I think the last season I watched was the one that, a uh, Colombiano one, and I know Nina Garcia is another. Uh, she's one of the judges, uh, or used to be one of the judges um, on Project Runway. So, but I think just appreciating how how difficult being able to come up with designs and and your vision and 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 grow as a as a designer can be. 
when you mentioned Project Runway, it reminded me of this. You see that right here, the, the first video? Yes. I thought that was so cool and clever. It, 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 I actually really enjoyed it. It's two minutes, so I'm not going to play it, but it's the African fashion show. And whenever they pass by each other, they do a, 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 a dance. It's really cool. It's nice. very hip. I'm going to have to check it out. All right. Any last words before we wrap it up? Tax the rich. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. Where's my where's my tax debate? Tax the rich so tax we can open up 800 base military base number 899 in Guam or some country in Europe. So, yeah, let's tax the rich and use it to open up a new military base. Yeah, and I said tax rebate. That I think that I say tax debate or tax rebate. I don't know what I said, but you know what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes uh, my English is not very good looking. My English is, yeah. She said not very good looking or not very pretty. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it's very good looking. Yeah. <laughs> all right. If you all out there enjoy our content, make sure to check us out. We are Brown Perspective. Estamos on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Nos vemos. Síguenos. <laughs>